Thursday night, man. So great seeing you all. Missed you guys last week. Crazy missed, man. It's so glad to be back with you, man. I couldn't wait for Thursday to, to you know, come soon enough, you know, but here we are. So really appreciate, you know, again, you guys coming out week after week, your support, your dedication to this ministry. You know, this isn't mine. This is ours. You know, we're, we're in this together, man. So I really appreciate you all. Uh, tonight, we are going to be in Genesis 14. So if you got your Bibles or you want to follow along in the screen, Genesis 14. So we see here, and let me give you a little backstory here on Genesis 14. <clears throat> the, the, the kings of the, of, of the surrounding area had, had conspired and they went down and they attacked Sodom at this point, the king of Sodom, and they, they fought. But the king of Sodom gave up, you know, the fight. And in that time, Lot. A A A Abrams, this was prior before becoming Abraham, his nephew was taken captive and his wife and his children and were taken captive by these kings. So when Abram had heard this, you, know, you would say the first posse ever, you know, recorded in, in history that I know of, you know, so he rounded up 318 trained men, servants from his house, and he pursued, you know, the, you know, and fought to get Lot back. So when he had heard that Lot had been taken captive, he, you know, no questions asked. He went out and chased after the perpetrators and brought Lot back. And, you know, you could see this in history. You know, I mean, Western movies have it all the time. You know, they gather up the posse because, you know, cattle was stolen or something like that. Then you have the, the Battle of Thermopylae where, you know, where the movie The 300 is from and the last dance there for, for the Spartan army against King Xerxes, you know, so all through history, you see that, that, you know, when, when great men have risen up to the challenge to save another brother and tonight's message is rescue mission. And, and I believe that that's where we're at. See, gentlemen, we're born literally behind enemy lines. We are born into this earth, which is captive by a King that is not God. That is, you know, the, the enemy, this is his playground. So we are literally born into a world of sin and condemnation and just of everything that's evil. And it is our opportunity to make it out. You know, we've been placed here with one purpose, to get our, to get our brothers out of here. And since we were born in captivity, you could say, but we've been freed. We're free from the bondage of sin. We're free from being slaves to sin. And that's what the Bible says, that we are free men in Christ. And we should never forget that. But at the same time, there are brothers who have and are still captive to this world and to the things of this world. And Abram could have just said, hey, you know what? That's a lot, man. You know, I told his, you know, silly head not to move to Sodom. He should have just stayed here with me. You know, so whatever mess he's in, that's on him. But Abram didn't react that way. You know, it said that when Abram heard that, immediately he gathered up 318 men and just went out. And pursued and fought. Didn't question what happened to Lot. Why did Lot get into trouble? You know what? You know how did this come about? Didn't didn't question. You know the backstory. No. But then we find ourselves. You know in the same situation. How many people do you know? How many friends of yours? How many brothers in Christ that you know that are today literally captive to the things of this world? That are captive to pornography that are captive to alcohol to captive to dependent on on prescription medication that are just captive to to you know pursuing things of this earth, of this world idolatry 
I mean, the list of captivity is long and distinguished. And so are the captives. I mean, I remember when we started this ministry, what, over, yeah, over a year ago now, you know, year and a half. You know, we, we were a lot larger ministry and week after week, we, you know, we were growing and, you know, we'd go back and forth. But then we started to dwindle away, you know, and we've become this core group now. But I ask myself every every week, I'm saying, where's so-and-so? And where's, you know, my brother here? And, and, and I'll reach out and I'll talk to them and, you know, I'll call them and, you know, text back and forth. I um, don't answer, you know, but. I know a few that have been taken back captive to the things of this world. They started off strong in this ministry and they started off strong in their pursuit with God, you know, on, the, you know, going to church and their own things. And then they suddenly just started dwindling away. And, you know, and it's up to us as men of God, free men, you know, and, and, and let me, let me really point that out. We are free men. We are free through the blood of Jesus Christ. So we need to ask ourselves, what about our brothers who are being held captive tonight? Because I think each and every one of us could right now take out a pen and paper and, and write down a list of names. I know I can. And I could probably spend the next 45 minutes or an hour just throwing names down here tonight of guys that I know that were in Christ and now that are just held captive again by the world. And nobody's pursuing them. There's no 318 men that are gathering, you know, that are rounding up a posse and saying, hey, let's go get this guy and bring him back home. And that's the sad part. That is the sad part that we deal with each and every day. We're going around in our lives, free men living amongst captive people. Look around you, because this world is one giant prison. We're prisoners to our careers. We're prisoners to our lust. We're prisoners to our idolatry. We're prisoners to our way of thought. We're, we're held captive to so many things of this world. And the true freedom that we can find is only in Jesus Christ. But it's getting fewer and fewer. The, the, the free men of this world are few and beyond. You know, we're not seeing that as before. You know, the, the more I, I go through my contact list and I'm saying, you know, and I was doing it this week because I was, I was doing this lesson and I'm like, captive, free, captive, captive, captive free you know and, and it scared me it haunts me you know because my god the captivity rate is just growing by the day and i asked myself god I, I said where are those 318 men that we can gather up and you know in a posse and just reach out and bring these guys back into the fold you know let them know that hey you're loved that god loves you hey i love you you know we're here for you we we, we want to help you there isn't 318 men it's just simply the man in the mirror and the will and the passion to do it. And God, I think, is looking at each and every one of us here tonight and everybody that will watch this video in the future and ask the question, do you need 318 or are you enough? Can you go out there and bring back a brother into the fold? Can you go out and just reach out with a phone call, reach out with prayer, reach out with whatever that brother needs that you know needs it? But are we willing to take that step and do it? We're enjoying our freedom. I enjoy my freedom in Christ today more than ever. I've been given a rebate on that freedom. I know Nelson would probably feel the same way, you know, after his battle. You know, we, we feel alive again. And, and many of us who, who, who will go through that, that renewing process with God, we feel alive again. But there's a world out there that's captive. There's brothers that are out there perishing in captivity that are enslaved to their sin. And every day they're perishing. And every day they're crying out and looking to see if 318 men are in the horizon going there to rescue them. Lot was fortunate that Abram got up with just as soon as he found out and did what he needed to do. Because Abram was a man of faith. Abram was a man of valor. Abram was a friend. Abram knew what he had to do. His nephew was being held captive. He didn't ask, well, hey, how big is this army that's, you know, taking them? Or let's, you know, let, let's think about this. Let's, you know, let's come up with a game plan. He didn't. He took 318 of his own servants, meaning trained up in his house, 
same thought process, same way of thinking, same way of processing, same way of believing. And he went out and pursued to the very pit to get his nephew back and his wife and his children. But ask yourself tonight, who do I know that is being held captive tonight and his wife and his children? And maybe there's no turning back for that brother. Gentlemen, we need to realize that there's a world around us that we are not the sum of ourselves, but we are the sum of many. And that's what we've been placed here behind enemy lines on a rescue mission. Our mission is to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. And through that message and through that mission is, is setting captives free. We are here to set the captives free. We're here to open up the prison cells, the spiritual prison cells, and release those men from that captivity, from that bondage. Because it's out there. Just pick up your phone and a few clicks and you're in place where you don't want to be. Go outside and you're going to see more bars, more forms of entertainment, more things to, to just take away from, from your eyes, take away your eyes from Jesus in a heartbeat. Just turn on the news and you, you'll get depressed within 20, in 20 seconds. Look at, sometimes look at your financial situations, your, your, fi your family situations, and you can throw yourself in a jail cell real quick when you start looking around or look at, think about your past, you know, the things, you know, wh where you came from and where you're at. And you can easily go back to that. But we've been set free. We've been given an opportunity that most men don't have. We have freedom. And I'm not talking about freedom given by the United States Constitution, because that is being eroded today. And that's a whole other subject. But the freedom that we have in Christ, no man can take that. No government can revoke that. Because that is the eternal blood of Jesus that gives us that freedom. And through that freedom, we have responsibilities. So just as Abram must have thought, what, what's my next move? We have to ask, what is our next move? And I think Abram showed us in Genesis 14 what our next move is. Get up and go. Get up and free those that are captive tonight. Every man here knows somebody. Every man here knows minimum at least one brother that you might have gone to church with or that you worked with, or that you knew that one time was just fired up about God or had a relationship with God. And today he is nowhere close to being near God and he's suffering for it and his children are suffering for it and his marriage is suffering for, for it and we can't turn a blind eye to this we just can't pretend well hey you know what he should have thought things out better nobody told him to get a divorce or nobody told him to get that job or nobody told him to get into that debt or nobody told him to do this or that yeah we can sit here we can point 10 fingers but that's not what God calls us to do God calls us to reach out to that brother and rescue him. And that is our mission tonight. And that should be our mission every day that we're focused on this earth is to rescue our brothers because the captivity rate is growing by the day. It is simply growing by the day. The bars are full. The strip clubs are full. <laughs> the hits on, on, you know, on the internet pornography sites are full. No, you know, no, no, no porn site in the internet is going out of business. They're billion dollar businesses, billion with a capital B. Every man that clicks on that is held, is captive. Every man that sits in a nightclub watching a woman dance for money without her clothes is captive. Every man that sits in a bar tonight is being held captive. Every man that is in a, living in a dark place popping pain medication when he doesn't have to just to just escape the reality of his life is being held captive. And the question is, they're dying. Not only are they dying of physical death, they're dying of spiritual death. Now, I can't do anything about the physical because that's just life. But I sure as hell can change the spiritual. I can be a part of of something greater. You know, I always say doctors are amazing people. They can, you know, doctors will say, well, I saved his life. 
you can save my life at the operating table and you can, you can patch me up and you can, you know, do my surgeries and you can prescribe whatever you want, but I'm still going to die. <laughs> you know, no matter all the, all the good you can do for me in the moment, my day is going to come. But my spirit, well, that's going to live forever. So whoever performs surgery on my spirit, that's the guy I'm going to honor. That's the guy I'm going to shout out to. No offense to the doctors, but that's the guy that's going to keep me alive forever. We are that person. We are the ones that can share with another brother and give him something that he needs, the keys to his freedom, the keys to the freedom of coming out of that prison cell that he's placed himself in of this world and letting him out. Rescue him from the grasp of this world. Rescue them behind enemy lines. You know, this is the, you know, the ultimate mission. You know, the, this is usually reserved for special forces and, you know, the different army units, what they call tier one units, will go behind enemy lines and, and rescue down pilots or hostages or, you know, things like that. And you, you, we see these in the movies and we're like amazed and wow at their actions. And we call them heroes. You know, guys from SEAL Team 6 and Delta Force and U.S. Army Rangers. And, you know, in different situations. You are that man. You are that man on a spiritual level. Because you see, SEAL Team 6 can rescue somebody in some remote country. But you can rescue that person from the grasp of hell. And forever make sure that they have a place in the kingdom of heaven. But if we look around our world today, there's hundreds of thousands of men in cells tonight. Thousands, hundreds of thousands worldwide, state, you know, in our country, in our state, in our county, in our community, our neighbors, our friends, guys we grew up with, guys that we work with, that are crying out for help tonight. And we're walking around with a big mass full of keys. And we're saying, I don't think I, I can do this. I don't, I'm not qualified. I'm not trained. You know, I'm just one person. And God is telling you, yes, you can. And I need you to do it. But God, if I had 318 guys, you know, with me, you know, we can just, that, that'd, be, that'd be amazing. And he's saying, you don't need 318. You have me in you. Is that not enough? There's no argument there. If he's in us, we are the most powerful person on earth. If God is in us, there is nothing we cannot accomplish. Nothing we can accomplish in his name. So tonight, gentlemen, I ask you, who's that brother? Because I'm, I'm hoping that throughout this entire conversation, you have realized, man, there's somebody. There's a brother I need to reach out to. There's somebody that, you know, was fired up. You know, that we, 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 we went to the same church, we hung out at the same men's group together, or we worked together, and all of a sudden, you know, he's telling me, hey, I'm going through a divorce, or hey, you know what, uh, I haven't seen my kids in six months, or hey, I'm cheating on my wife, or, or hey, I'm, I'm having problems with alcohol, or hey, you know what, uh, what started off is, you know, taking some, you know, some pain medication for, for that ankle is now turned into an addiction. We've all run into somebody who's shared that story. And then we just sit there and we do nothing about it. And we just say, well, hey, you know, who told him to take 10 pills? Or who told him to, you know, divorce his wife? I didn't tell him to, you know, get a girlfriend on the side. That's his problem. I got enough with my own. But God has called us here as special forces units to rescue that particular man. To rescue that particular brother. To pray for that brother. To go after him and say, hey, you need to come back. If he doesn't want to, then hey, it's on him. But let it not be that we did not try. Let it not be that we knew the situation and we just said, I'm good, so I don't need to do anything else. Gentlemen, I, I sit here week after week and I tell you, hey, get your house in order, your house, your house, your house, your house. But today I'm telling you, we've got to look outside of our house tonight. We've got to open the door and see our neighbors. We got to open the door and see our brothers 
we got to open the door and see our co-workers or maybe that guy in the street that we that God says, hey, talk to him. And we need to reach out because that man is held behind enemy lines and he needs to be rescued. I know I needed to be rescued. And I know I had amazing brothers that no matter where I was in my life, were always there to stretch out their hands. No matter how bad things got for me spiritually or personally, I can always turn to one of them for wise counsel, for advice. They would stretch out their hand and not be ashamed of what I had become, but showed me grace and showed me mercy. Now I need to be that brother for somebody else. I need to be the one that's stretching out my hand tonight. We need to be the ones that are stretching out our hands tonight for another brother. Because if not, we're just going to see this world, the population of captivity just grow and grow and grow. And people, men perishing. And when a man goes down, his home goes with him. His wife goes down with him. His children go down with him. Generations after that go down with him. Yet we hold the key to freedom. We hold that key. So I'm asking you tonight, what are you going to do with the keys that have been given to you? What are you going to do with the mission that has been laid upon your feet? Get a piece of paper tonight, tomorrow. Pray about it. Write down that list of names. Of guys, maybe you haven't talked to in six, seven months, or maybe six or seven years. This ministry started just like that. I picked up my phone, I went through A, and I reached out to every man on that list. Just as an example, I hadn't talked to Nelson in years. Years. We hadn't spoken a word. But by the time I got down to Nelson's name, I couldn't skip over him because I was too embarrassed because of that fact. I had to dial the number ask for forgiveness, and build back what I had destroyed. And after I spoke to him, it was the next person on that list, and the next person, and the next person. And here we are. And I thank God for that moment. Was it humbling? Absolutely. Was it difficult? My God, probably one of the hardest things I had to do. But is it rewarding? I wouldn't trade my friendship today with each and every man here in this, in this call, and those that still to this day are a product of that one moment. I wouldn't change it for the world. It was the best thing that happened to me in my life on a spiritual level. So tonight, take your phone, take a piece of paper, take three guys, just take three names, pray for those men, pray for those men, and when you feel ready, Give those men a call. Don't preach to them. Don't teach them. Don't just, just stretch out your hand and say, hey, brother, how you doing? Where are you at? That's it. And I guarantee you, you're going to make that man's day. You're gonna, you might be the vessel that changes his life, that changes the course in his life. You might be the one that's going to save his life. To a certain degree. Or you can look at those three names. And do nothing. And just live the consequences of that. For generations to come. Gentlemen we can't sit here idle anymore. We don't have all the time in the world. Look at the news around you. Look at the world around us. Things are looking really good. Because things are really bad. Time is short. The work is immense. This is our mission. This is our time. This is the moment in history that we've been placed here for such a time as this to seek out the captive souls and to rescue them. This is a rescue mission, gentlemen. Be there for your brothers. Be there and fight for your brothers tonight. Take the, your brothers out of captivity. 
Give them hope. Give them the hope and freedom that, that you've been given, that I've been given. And let's pass it on to another brother who needs, who desperately needs it. Because I know when I needed it, it was offered to me. It was extended to me. And now it's my job to extend it to another man. And hopefully that man will extend it to another man. And we can cause a ripple effect that will change our world one man at a time. And set one man free at a time. This is our mission, gentlemen. And my God, you got your marching orders. Do what you want with them. I know what I got to do. I got to start back on my contact list for me and work my way to Z one more time. And I hope you join me doing that sometime, if not tonight, and in, or in the near future. And set men free tonight and take back our world. Guys, that's all I got, man. Floor is yours tonight.